Hey guys, week three. Week three, Esther chapter three was one of those that really hit home. It was such a timely chapter for me. It was almost aggravating. <laughs> um, in this chapter, they speak about um, Haman. And um, Haman was like the king's right hand man. And in there, he was brought up in position in the kingdom. And as he was going out, everyone was supposed to bow to him. And of course, Esther's uncle, Mordecai, was at the gate. And when Haman was going by, Mordecai did not bow to him, of course, because he wasn't his king. And um, with that, Haman got upset. Not only did Haman get upset, Haman got petty. Anyone who understands that Haman became... he. He saw Mordecai, saw he felt like Mordecai didn't honor him. He felt dishonored by Mordecai when Mordecai didn't bow to him. And because of that, he was like, I not only want him killed, I want his whole race taken care of. I want him gone. Each and every one of them. They don't even serve the king anyways. They serve God. I don't like that because they won't bow to me. He felt dishonored. And in that time, we were at a place where... My husband and I were preparing. God was preparing us to get ready for this move. And we were really trying to wrap our heads around moving to the desert because, of course, neither one of us had even been to this side of the coast before. We had never been to the, the West Coast before. And so all we knew was that Arizona was a hot place. It was a desert. There was cactus. And we didn't know how to feel about that. <laughs> But we knew what God had said. We knew the word that God had given us. And because of that, we were preparing to go. In that time, a lot of times when God is doing something in your life, you almost know and it's almost confirmation when things start to go wrong. People start to go a little off. You know, people start tripping. And then you're like, okay, obviously God's doing something because everyone else is going crazy. And that's exactly what happened. You know, we lived in a town where we were just so immersed in the small town culture, in the people, in the families there, that it was hard for us to leave. And a lot of times when God is doing something and when he's asking you to go somewhere, to get up and move somewhere, a lot of times he has to bring you to where things begin to disconnect from you because when you're so connected to people, to places, and to things, you will get to a point where you will almost go la 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 and you will clog your ears and you will cover your eyes because you don't want to hear anything that is going to cause you to have to get up and go. And so things began to detach from us. You know, people began to kind of slowly stop talking to us we were at a time where we had taken a break from ministry. We had a lot of things going on within our marriage, within ourselves, that God was trying to really bring us back into alignment with. One of our um, our worship pastor, one of the things she said to us is, you know, you, you need to bring back the solidarity in your marriage. And we kind of looked at her like, whatever, you know, we don't, we don't know what you're talking about. But she was so right. She was so right because at that time, even before we were able to see it, God was trying to build me and my husband Derek's marriage. He was trying to get us to where we were strong enough to be able to handle what was about to happen. And we had no clue what God was about to do in our lives. And had we left in the time when we first began to know what he was doing, we would have never made it through the things that we went through, even in the first couple of months of being here in Arizona. God was trying to build our marriage back up. And because he was trying to do that, people and everything around us literally began to fade away. People that we used to hang out with stopped coming around. We stopped reaching out to them. People that we were close with, that we considered family, we literally began to step back, not because they did anything wrong, not because we hated them, but we literally felt God pulling us away from everything and everyone and bringing us to a place where it just needed to be us. And sometimes people can look at that and think of that as being isolation. And it is in a sense isolation, but not isolation from God, but from people so that you can get into that secret place. Because that's what it was. 
God was pulling our family into a secret place with him so that we could really, really, really allow him to prepare us for the things to come. And so at that time, because we didn't understand that, we looked at it as just attack, you know, and in some ways there was an attack against our family because at the same time, when people are on the outside looking in, unless God has, you know, called them into the conference call to let them know what he's doing in your life, not everyone's going to understand what God is doing. Not everyone's going to understand that he's sending you somewhere. Not everyone's going to believe that you're hearing from God. You know, in the both times that God transitioned us, we had people on all sides of it. We had people that looked at us like, y'all are crazy. You're picking up four kids and leaving to a place you've never been before. You're stupid. That's not God. And later on, they realized, you know what? Maybe that was God because everything worked out for your good. Because God is building you guys. You guys are better off now than you were before. We had people that literally looked at us and said, you're just running from your problems. And you know what? Quite honestly, you know, when we lived in Florida, we did have a lot of issues. But I believe that when God transitioned us out of Florida, it was not only for our good as far as ministry wise, but it was to deliver us out of a place that we were never going to grow. And now with South Carolina, it wasn't necessarily that we were never going to grow there, but we were so engulfed in everything and everyone there that we would have easily given up any higher levels of ministry, any any form of ministry that would have taken us away, even if it was traveling. God could have wanted to send us worldwide, and he still does want to send us worldwide. And had we still had the connections that we had, we would have never went because we would have never wanted to leave everyone. So in here, you know, when when God when when Satan when the enemy comes in and he sees that God is doing something in your family, he sees that God is doing something within you, he's not only going to want to attack you, but when you get to a point where things don't get to you as easily as they used to, the enemy will come in and say, "You know what? She's starting to get a little stronger." Let me start attacking the ones around her. Let me start using the ones around her to start rolling their eyes a little more, to start being a little paranoid, to start getting to her weak spots. Those are her weak spots. For me, my weak spots are my family, my husband and my kids. My kids started acting up. They started having issues not only with school, but just with their attitudes with, you know, within the house. My husband and I started, you know, my husband was going through his own thing. God was working on him and we began to clash because God is doing something with me. God is doing something with him. And we're looking at each other like we just have a lot going on. There was a lot that was coming into play with picking up and uprooting an entire family and leaving. And so in this one, you know, the enemy comes in and he not only tries to attack you, but he wants to attack everyone around you. And unless you're in that secret place with God, unless you are really submitting every part of your life, not just the parts that you want to, but every part of your life to God, you leave that crack, you leave that door crack for the enemy to sneak in and still come in and jab you. And that's where God is really wanting to grow us. He's really wanting to grow us to recognize attacks when they come, to take the time to step back and say, God, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? What am I not getting right now? And whatever it is, show it to me, teach me so that I can move forward from this. I don't want to go through the same cycle anymore. I don't want to continue to allow the enemy to attack my family. You know, teach me, unlock whatever it is that you've given to me so that I can properly fight against it. And for me, it was my prayers. For me, it's my prayer time. For a lot of us, it's our prayer time. You know, we never make as much time as we should in prayer because, you know, we're busy, we're cooking, we're doing laundry, we're working all day, we're in school, we're, you know, home with the kids or we're out and then coming home to the kids. I know the story, believe me. I do, I do it all and I come home and I do it all over again the next day after a couple of hours of sleep if I get that. But when you make it a priority to make ministry, prayer, worship, Bible study a priority in your home, it changes everything. It really does. And as you see, you know, in the beginning, 
it, it's about staying in your lane. It's about staying in your lane and saying, God, take complete control. You lead and guide us in the way that you want us to go. Lead and guide me in the way that you want me to go. I don't want to set a bad example for the people around my life. People are watching us, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we notice it or not. People are watching us. They're watching to see how we react to our husbands, to our bosses, to our children, to our family members, our parents. They're watching to see our reaction because they're taking that example and they're running with it. They're running with it. And so we have to stay in our lane. We have to be that good example to people. We have to submit every aspect of our lives to God so that in doing that, he's able to come in and show us how limitless he can be. And in turn, we have to stay in tune with God because when the enemy sees that we're beginning to kind of get into alignment where we need to be and we're really starting to walk, and we're really starting to unlock some things within our ministry, within our lives, our hearts, he's gonna come and he's gonna come really hard and we have to be ready for it. We have to be ready for whatever he brings. So I love you guys. I pray that this has been encouraging and I will see you next week.